and how you doing? Welcome to Abaji Talk. Gordo the Texar here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Papi Chulo, who's in the house, filling in for the security guy, Andrew Lanning, who once again is traveling around the globe, spreading the word on security. Um, well, spreading something. I don't know. He's spreading the aloha. That's what he's doing. Anyway, we have with us today Pete Insall. Insall. He's our he's our guest today. He's a security architect for Presidio uh, West Coast. Yep, on the That's West Coast. Correct. So um, uh, we're going to talk about secure network architectures in the cloud and some things that are happening in that space, which is kind of interesting. You can tell by this pale skin howly boy <laughs> <laughs> this is his first trip to hawaii and you don't get much paler than that and thank god there's someone someone paler than me in the house so he blends in with his shirt hey, thank you, you. Nice, thank you <laughs> nicely worth the shirt so it's great to have you on the show um we have a few segments we do a little bit of news we have this thing you know got one tech job and then we'll we'll get into your background and the things like that but before we, we'll do uh, we'll get out of the way um uh you know got one tech job yeah, and feel, feel, to com feel free to comment sure. anytime on this. is the latest one that uh, is actually down the street from where I live. You got to take a little close look at that um, photo. That is a lamppost, <laughs> and that is the light for my street. It's been like that for, oh, I'd say we're coming up on three months. It's been down three months, that's how it is. But I tried to figure out what the problem was, and then I remembered when I was with the city, there's a thing called the Joint Poll Committee. <laughs> so it's probably in the committee right now trying to determine who's got to fix it. Because the poll itself is one committee, or one department. The arm that holds the poll is another department, and the end is another department. So that's probably going through its due diligence right now at the Joint Poll Committee at the Sitting and Counting of Honolulu. Who is in trouble when somebody crosses at night without the light and gets hit by a car? Okay, well then that's going to be another story. Which, by the way, there's a crosswalk just up the street from that. So you know, you're, you nailed it, and that's that's you know that's all you got to do is have someone happen there. But anyway, we're on it. We've got our stuff, you know, on the upside, <laughs> taking care of everything, sitting and counting of Honolulu. Um, so. Security in the cloud is kind of an interesting thing. Before yep. we get there, now tell us a little bit about yourself. So where are you from? Where did you go to school? Did Ooh, you go to school? Yes. Homeschool. Yeah, I have an interesting background. <laughs> so I, I've been a little bit all over the map. So uh, I was a military brat for years. Okay. So I've been, all over, uh, I've been all over the United States and Europe as well. I was actually born in Germany. Um, but I ended up myself ended up going in the military. I actually uh, ended up going to Texas A&M University for engineering degree. Didn't finish that up. Ended up going in the military, and I was stationed in the Navy on submarines. Okay, so you were Navy, and you were Army. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we now, like each other. So it's one you like each other. Now, do you have any? Um, do you have any unique and interesting stories about getting arrested the first time you were assigned when you were stationed somewhere? Not that he had it happen to him. No, they no, didn't get. He didn't get arrested. He got a, a ticket for jaywalking. Anyway, not, nothing anything? that I can disclose publicly. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, his, his was the same. <laughs> All I know is his uniform was wrinkled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, by the way, you're looking pretty tanned. Yeah, hey, I'm enjoying my time yeah, off. Yeah, thank is. God I work so hard for a living, you know. I, I wouldn't mind borrowing some of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, look at that. There's a contrast. That was wow. <laughs> Phew, that's scary. Just wear a lot of sunscreen. Uh, when you're in you know, that's, that's when you spend all your time in a submarine, this is what happens oh, to you. Oh, that's you know, true. You're, you're, actually, you know, I never you're deprived of sunlight and other things. So. Yeah, you ever get cloudy day syndrome? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you're stuck inside. So, so you were in the Navy, you got out of the Navy, and uh, where did you say you went to school in? Texas A&M? Yeah, I went to Texas A&M originally, and I was going for an engineering degree, mechanical engineering. Ended up going uh, into the Navy after that, never finished out, finished about two years of my engineering degree, mm -hmm. and then uh, ended up going to the Navy, and I actually was a nuclear chemist in the Navy. So Whoa. I did radiation protection and reactor chemistry on a sub. That explains for, the yes, color. That explains why I'm a little wider. Yeah, am I glowing? Oh, uh, am I am I glowing? glowing right personnel. <laughs> <laughs> I love you oh. on this show, man. You're the best. Um, so yeah, after I got out, I got interested in uh, information technology in the late '90s and uh, started pursuing that. Ended up uh, ended up relocating and uh, landed in Florida. Ended up. Uh, oh, wait, working. Florida has sun. Yeah, Florida does have sun. Unfortunately, I spent—I no, didn't spend enough time in it. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, I ended up going into uh, network engineering, my first job for a large insurance company, Liberty Mutual, ended okay. up starting to work for them and uh, kind of progressed and ended up getting into security at that time and uh, kind of went from there and that became my passion. So. And that was in the mid to late 90s? Yep. And so think of what, I mean, in your, your young career in doing this, how much has security changed oh, over the past 10, 15 difference. years? Night and day difference. The entire concept that we started with is cloud concept. <laughs> yeah. Public cloud. You know, what was what is that, right? The internet was just starting out the dot com days. So So um, it just just shifted the whole yeah. world. And everybody's paranoid now about getting hacked and oh, yeah. and having their their exactly. data stolen yep. and their records stolen yep. and so on. And so and we'll talk a little bit let's let's talk a little bit about that. So give us a definition for our for our viewers. What is the cloud to you? What is the cloud? Uh, Not that's something that he hasn't seen much of because of his suntan, <laughs> but the, the cloud. <laughs> well, you know, the cloud by definition is uh, the cloud. well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cloud goes on in my let, head. Let's, most of let, the me, time. let me try to put together the right definition. But is effectively, it is uh, services um, being delivered um, from outside of the own outside of the organization um, is is the most common yeah so if, so if, so if you're getting services from a uh, oh, let me think a bank right and they're using their computer system and, and such are housed somewhere else right um, maybe managed by someone else yes, like presidio exactly um, then that would be in the cloud yeah versus if they had it in their own um, their well, own location? Well, th there's a couple definitions here, and it, it's really hard to explain this, but there's a concept of That's private, why you're the expert. private cloud okay. and public cloud. Okay. Private meaning you fully have control of this environment, which okay. you're making available all these resources available to all these end users, right? Okay. But you're controlling it in a fashion that allows you to deliver it with some degree of separation. With okay, within a box. Within right. a box. Okay. Right. And then public is it isn't your environment. It's hosted in somebody else's environment, but you're using their services. So, for example, I mean Netflix. Um, okay. Or good. Google. Yeah. They're all technically um, cloud services. Okay, and they're right? public or private? And they're public cloud because services because everybody's right. Using, right. The end user is consuming those. Yeah. Okay. And they're public services. So if I'm using uh, like Microsoft Office 365, that's a public cloud. That's service. a public yes, cloud service. Exactly. If I'm using um, ABC Bank, and all of that stuff is um, in theirs or a secluded data center that they control, that's a, a form of private cloud. It's it's got some gray it's got areas, some gray areas yeah, in there. Exactly. I know. I'm just trying to get you know, yeah, that, exactly. like where do you can that, yeah. define the lines, which yeah. show how complicated it could be. Yeah. So just think about. So now you specialize in the security side of this. Only thing, yeah, security on the security side. So you've got all these different types of clouds, and then you've got to secure it. Right. Now, now he's in security too. Now, but he's in the he's in the wetware the side. You know, we finally educated him. <laughs> wetware is people, ninety percent or whatever it is, water. Right. That's who it is. And then you've got the software side. Right. And the hardware side. Yep. What's the worst side? The hardware, software, or the wetware? The people side. Oh, I think people. Yeah, I guaranteed. Mean, people, hands down. I mean, you can do everything you can to secure everything, but at the end of the day, you're working with people. Right. With and the human error. <laughs> human error uh, or human uh, intent. Yes, human intent, human error. They, they can do, mean, all of, yeah. do all of those kinds lots of things. Lots of harm. Lot, lots of harm. So, um, so tell me, what it is you do? What it is it you do? As so, a, as a, as a so uh, cloud I, security architect. Yeah, so I spend most of my time uh, educating and talking to customers on how best to protect their data. Um, whether that be delivered in their own data centers, whether that be put into public cloud environments, uh, for example, like we just talked about. Um, but it's about putting together the right type of security solutions. But I, I'm mainly on the technology side, but like we just talked about, people are the biggest problem. So I like to talk about the people aspect of things as well, okay. not just focusing on how technology can solve the problems, but, but how do we help you know, get awareness on the people side, or how do we help control the people the problem? The people side. So, but, and then we use tools to help control exactly. the people problem that's going on there. Yes. Now you were saying earlier on today, there's a lot, the, the cloud is, is a growing industry. Yeah, yeah. So cloud services like some, are, what, are expanding 
what did you say, 37 billion? 37? 37 billion, yeah, it's expected to expand or top 37 billion uh, spending this year. This yeah. year. So that's yeah. 37 billion spending in cloud services, providing cloud services? Yeah, that's it's all cloud services combined. That's things from Amazon, that's things from Microsoft, that's Google's cloud services, all these other cloud services. Or it's going to be a roughly thirty-seven billion dollar market this year. Thirty-seven billion dollars, and your yeah. in your job, your job is to make sure all of that thirty-seven billion dollar market <laughs> is secure. <laughs> not all of it. No, only. Oh wait, yes, right. You've only got the West Coast, <laughs> so not a problem. Yeah. You got that yeah, under it's control. It's only one small only, portion. Like one small. So, sliver. so, yeah. so that's a huge. And is it? Do you see this growing? Is it going to continue oh, yeah, yeah. to grow? Cloud is this? is the is the trend of the future right now, um, as we call it, cloud. Uh, that is the trend of the future. Uh, every customer is looking at cloud services, uh, public cloud services specifically, if they haven't already adopted it, they're already there. Or they're and they're there without even knowing, knowing about it because right. guess what? We're all consumers of, of Google services, Facebook, you name it. We're all consuming these public software as a service offerings that are ultimately underneath the noses of a lot of organizations. So is it safe to say that if I'm on my mobile device that uh, and I'm going Facebook or right. LinkedIn or any yep. of those that, that I'm yep. on the cloud? You're all on the cloud, So yes. So anyone that's sitting out there is thinking, well, I'm not on the cloud, uh, <laughs> they're on the cloud. They're on the cloud, yes. Unless they get a flip phone and it's only the phone <laughs> and it doesn't have anything else. But exactly. even then, yes. that dial tone is coming from somewhere. That's true. And that might, that, that's true. that carrier could be in the cloud. That's true. Providing it's turned on though, right? The cloud, the system has to be on on your phone for it to go. Well, your phone has to be no, on. That's true. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good on. question. No, because yes. I didn't have this, uh, the cloud was out there in Verizon. I said, where's all my stuff? Oh, it's in the cloud. Oh, you didn't turn yours on. So whatever you thought you saved is not It's the safe. best security. If you just turn off all your electronic devices, you're more secure. No, but the cloud, the app, the app, <laughs> the app, the app Your app itself was not be, there, no. but you were on the cloud from a dial tone perspective. To make the call, right. right? But not from your data side, right? So, so, but good point. But if you have the app and you don't turn on the app, it's not going to the cloud. It's not your 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 photos aren't going no. or things aren't going. But if you're yeah. doing instant messaging, yep. And that is, app is turned off. You're still instant messaging, right? And so that's still in the. Is that safe to say in the cloud? Yeah. To some to yeah, and, in and some all player. your data is stored there too. So so that's so here we go so so. Data's in the cloud. And we agreed to that by signing on that long... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's called a EULA that yeah. no one reads. Yeah, right? nobody reads it. No that. one reads it. So, so you got the EULA, so you got, so you got, a, the, you got a cloud the data, you got to protect applications that are running on the mm -hmm. cloud, client things and so on, um, all this kind of stuff. So, so we're going to have to take a short break. It's amazing. We just cranked through 15 minutes, and, and I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface it's, of this cloud. It, it is. And so, but let us, let us do that. Let us do a little short break. We'll go get Angus. He's got a new gadget, I think, oh. for this week. And And uh, a new Scottish sign. And you haven't met Angus no, yet. No, no, I haven't. No, and, oh, looking yeah. forward to it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I hear you're English. Oh, my goodness. Wait till he finds out. Anyway, we'll be, it's Gordo the Texar. Papi, Papi Chulo. Chulo, I forgot your name for a minute. <laughs> Papi Chulo uh, is here, my co-host, and we're here with Pete Insall from Presidio. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching SyncTech Hawaii on SyncTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts six live talk shows from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from SyncTech. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you, too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. 
We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. 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 Welcome back. And uh, we're here to see our good buddy here, Angus. Angus, it's all of you now. Hey there. How you doing there, puppy? You're looking a wee bit brune. <laughs> That's how we say it in Scotland, you know. You're brune. You're brune. Yeah. And your, your guest is a wee bit peckish. You see that too? He said, yeah, it's nice to see someone here a little bit more pale than me. Well, almost pale than me. Uh, hey, you know, insult. Insult. That's an English name, you know, lad. Yeah. We beat the shite out of you in 1432. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, the Bruces were in there, and you, you never stood a chance. Anyway, we forgive you. So just keep all your stuff down there in England. You know, Scotland must have seen when they did, I forget. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I got a couple of things. I got a Scottish sign of the day. And when I put this up, especially so when the English come up into, uh, into, uh, uh, into Scotland, they can know where it is. This is a bus that's then a working. And we, when we our buses and not working, it says, ah, we know more than service. <laughs> that's how it is. Ah, we know more service. That's the bus in uh, the Scotland area. So that's how we're going. Anyway, you know, I always go out and try to find a new innovative gadget. So I got a new one today. It's so innovative, you can't buy it. It's a, it's a fan you put on your motorcycle to charge the battery in your iPhone. It's called an iFan. Can you beat that, lad? It's an iFan. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy, but you know, it's awesome. The travel is, you can't buy it yet. It's, it's in design in Norway. And Norway's really good at saving energy, so I think they're going to come up with it. The trouble is, they're going to charge us too much, I bet. <laughs> but anyway, it's called the iPhan. Watch out for it. It's kind of really cool. Anyway, that's my gadget. That's my, uh, my punch on the English. It's my punch on the puppy chulo. And it's nice to see you all again. Now remember, everybody, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Hello. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're so funny. Look forward to being a guest host. One day I'm going to take over the show one day. <laughs> we'll do it all in Spanish. We'll do it all in Spanish. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. Anyway, we're here, we're here with Pete Insall from uh, uh, Presidio. He's on, on the West Coast. You're a security architect. And we're talking about um, securing securing the cloud. Yep. So what, what, what are some of the biggest challenges you have in trying to secure uh, companies' applications and data that are on the cloud? Well, a couple of things that come to mind is a lot of times we just talked about that a lot of times organizations haven't actually uh, identified what their goals were, right, for, the, for going to the cloud. What are they actually trying to protect, right? The first thing we need to do in security is identify what we're trying to protect. Okay. What are our threats? What are the vulnerabilities, our exposure? So we always start with risk assessments. Um, so that's, that's one challenge is being able to identify the need that a risk assessment is critical okay. whenever we're, we're looking at the cloud or we're moving in the cloud. The other thing as part of it is, um, you know, what are the applications and the kind of data we're going to be putting in there, right? Is this sensitive information? Is like this credit card? Right. Credit right. Is this credit healthcare. card? Is this healthcare information? Because now we need to treat that a little bit differently and we need to provide proper security architecture around that. So there, there's a number of those considerations as well. So, but, but people, go ahead. It'd be like considering who has the right to that information also, because they have different levels. Yeah, so that's right. So just because I'm on the same web uh, network, yep. I don't have any business looking at this guy's uh, PII yep. when it has nothing to do with me, but I have a level of security to, uh, clearance. Yeah. But security yeah. clearance, yeah. exactly. So It's yeah. a principle of least privilege that we try to apply and for anything. PII any. is? Public, personally identifiable information. Yeah, personally identifiable yeah, information. Exactly. I, I was off for a couple of weeks. You were obviously yeah. a rank it's and he one was of officer. Those. <laughs> one of those, yeah. <laughs> no, I had a brain fart. I was off for the last couple of weeks. My, yeah. my brain is fried. You're still working on it, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's that. Mm -hmm. um, so what about compliance? Yeah. Like so there's PCI, HIPAA. Yep, there's CGIS, there's ITAR, there's, I, we can keep going oh, on yeah, and on about on every on. type of So compliance. when I hear this, then I start panicking out and say, maybe I shouldn't go to the cloud. No, actually, uh, you know, really the biggest thing that needs to be looked at and these public cloud environments, right. because it really that's what we're talking about here, pu these public services that you can put your data in. Right. It's just knowing what the potential risks are and how you can actually secure those environments. What they have natively to offer security to you, but right. what else you need to do to protect your information out there. Now, but they are compliant. They are compliant. Yes. Now, how much farther ahead do you think that the cloud providers are 
then, uh, and this is a loaded question because I already have my opinion, but the cloud service providers versus, versus the people that are doing it in-house with limited, I'm coaching it, limited talented resources. <laughs> well, when you've got like, I bet AWS and Amazon, or Amazon and Microsoft got a lot of people doing security. Yeah, they have some of the better security teams that you can ever find. Um, it's just the, the reality is Amazon and Microsoft they have some of the best security teams out there and they're going to know how to secure their environments better than most customers can themselves. Now, it doesn't mean that a customer that puts their data in there doesn't have a responsibility to equally secure their information because at the end of the day, there's not a there's a concept of a shared responsibility. Right. So everybody oh, like whole committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The shared responsibility. So, so by shared responsibilities, so I can use like the endpoint. Oh, there, yeah, there you go. Cloud, um, um, what does that say? Cloud services statistics. There's the, the 37 billion in 2016. Yep. So I have another slide, Missouri. If you can find that, I want to bring that one up because the dirty dozen cloud security concerns. Oh, there, here's what we're protecting. Oh, hold it, hold that one. That's great. Yeah. So this, this is, is what the, we're protecting. This, this is, is a great the picture. value of a hacked company. You know, a lot of people think that it's just data that they're trying to protect, but there's a lot more information. When cyber criminals are going after a company, they can exploit and get access to a lot more information through different means. Here, right? They can go through partners. They can get access to the cloud services a company has. They can get access to the financials the assets that they own. So it, it helps illustrate a point about, you know, we're not just protecting just data alone, uh, the kind of sensitive information we just talked about. It goes far beyond that. Yeah, if you look at like you look, you look at the slide, you've got, you've got physical aspects, you've got the um, yep. HR data, you've right, got financials, so. like you said, virtual, all those kinds of things that are being protected. Amazing. Yeah, even whether you're in the cloud or whether you have to do it on-prem, right. on your prem, it's the same thing. And do you have the talent that can do that? Exactly. Now, there's another slide that, you know, maybe we can call the Dirty Dozen. It's called uh, d Cloud Security Concerns. Right. You know, even though it says Cloud Security Concerns, when I look at this, it's security concerns no matter whether it's cloud or <laughs> not, right? I mean, yes. How can it just be cloud? Data breaches. How many data breaches have we heard of um, um, that I know of from local right. local firms right. that have their own data center? Well, what this comes from is this is actually a survey put out by the Cloud Security Alliance for this year, actually, and it's a ranking of for cloud services. What are the highest risks when and threats for cloud services? Right. And, and this is ranked according to some of the concerns that are out there from professionals and everybody else and. Where do we see the highest risks? And actually, you know, data breaches being number one, that's top of mind right now. Right. We're, yeah, we're seeing, hack, seen we're seeing hacked companies right. everywhere. So, of course, that's top of mind. That You know, the second one in the list yeah, is What's that, credential management? Yeah, credential management is the, is the concept of, you know, how are you actually securely storing, um, you know, passwords and identity information? And how is that information being transmitted back and forth? How do you validate that it was you that logged on to a particular service, right? And that's where you've heard things like, have you heard of two-factor authentication? Have you do this with your bank where you, you sign on to your bank and then they send you a pin code and you yeah, enter yeah. the code? That code, that's two-factor authentication, right? Exactly. Right? And that yep. should be, I would say, It should be the place. norm. It should be the norm. Unfortunately, there's so many organizations that have no concept of that today. Yeah, and I would say if you look inside the organizations, and I could point this out, organizations that are running their own data centers and their own facilities, see if your sign-ons are two-factor authentication. Do you change your passwords every 90 days or 60 days, whatever right. it is? You're not allowed to reuse passwords. There's a whole set of rules yep. that should be followed, right? The governance. Yep, yep. that's the governance side That's of the things. governance yep. side of it. That's, that I can guarantee you that most um, in-house serviced organizations that don't right. have to be um, regulatory, regulatory compliant. Yeah, we, we find that the, the, the higher the regulatory requirements on the particular customer, the, the tendency that they happen to have better security hygiene, as I like to call oh, it. Oh, right? yes, we've heard that yes, word. Yes, exactly. Mr. So. Lanning uses that word a lot. Yes. So, so what about, um, um, there's an insecure APIs, which are application program interfaces. Correct. So that's number three. Now, a lot of people wouldn't know what that is, but you know, kind of give us a, in a layperson's so it's way. a it's a we it's a way to programmatically make changes or retrieve data or input data into an environment using programmatic methods. Okay. So you know, you're familiar with uh, scripting and things like that, orchestration, automation, 
those are all using what's known as APIs. As APIs. These APIs must have secure authentication mechanisms, though, in place. Sometimes they have vulnerabilities to where those can be exploited by you know, criminals, et cetera, that know how they work. Now, would, an, would a, an example of an API, if I downloaded a particular application onto my mobile device that then got into one of my production systems, per se, you know, how do I know that that mobile device application is secure enough yeah, to that, be that's handling one way to secure interface. There's it's usually behind the scenes, but you know your application is is a mobile web version that's just na using native access, but it's a web version. It's a web version. So what's the ne what's the next one you think that uh, the next one that people should be you know conscious of and be made aware of? Well, you know one uh, one other thing is uh, you know people are having their credentials stolen, right? You, we're, yep. we're hearing of these phishing emails where people click on them and they they're they're asked for, to put in their username and password into a log form, into a uh, form filled. They right. fill it in and ultimately the attacker steals their credentials and then uses that to compromise another system. Another system. Yeah. And that's so they impersonate that individual. So it's hijacking. So hijacking. Hijacking. So what, what hijacking. should, you know, some, what should a layperson be doing to ensure well, that that doesn't happen? Once again, this, this, this whole concept of identity is the new perimeter. You may have heard yeah. that, that, that phrase. It's true. I mean, at the end of the day, we're only as secure as how we can validate if it was you right. or myself right. logging into a particular system. And if passwords are dead, I think that's pretty yes, well common. Yes, passphrases now, yeah, 21, exactly. 21 and, plus and nobody characters. And nobody can remember passphrases, so this I whole... I have a system, but I'm not going to tell anybody <laughs> it because then they'll have my system. So this, <laughs> any, many, many, this whole concept <laughs> well, of... <laughs> yeah, that's where this whole concept of two-factor comes from. It's right. something you have and something you know yeah, is the way well, to. Well, yeah. Okay, so we gotta we gotta move quick because yeah. I only got we only got a minute. This is CSA. You talked about that. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to um, I didn't have a chance to talk about some of the news, but I'll do a quick one because uh, Powbox gives us some interesting stuff and it's really related to this. They were saying it related to costs, the healthcare IT costs per doctor now are at thirty two thousand dollars a year just for security. And that's just to protect the records, right? And that's what. And if if your doctor, dentist, healthcare provider is not paying in that range, then there's you, got, you have to start wondering <laughs> if they've got you know stuff going on, and maybe they should be putting their stuff on the cloud. So that's it's and it's, good, it's expected to increase. That's a forty percent increase since two thousand and nine. Yeah. Like you said earlier about what was going on, and then uh, we had a, a HIPAA criminal pr prosecution in Tampa the other day. There, um, guy went to jail. Yeah. For violating HIPAA. So get ready, more of that stuff is happening. So anyway, Pete, this has been, this is, we haven't even scratched the surface, yeah. so we gotta get you back. Um, you know, um, Pete is obviously an expert in this cloud stuff. Um, I'm dizzy um, with everything that's been going on, but we also have something that we never, this is a totally secure, um, <laughs> HIPAA <laughs> compliant um, uh, solo cup that we give to all of our guests. And you have number 82 in the series. Right. So, 82 in the series. So, wow, that's great. And that's it. So anyway, that's it. We're about ready to head out of the show. And like we say, at the, oh, thank you, Nick, and thank you, Zuri. But like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing? <laughs>